Hello, I'm Sean Lim and welcome to After 10. Korea, it's the only country in the world that remains divided. For 60 years, a truce has kept the lines drawn and the people separated. But with generations drifting apart, will the peninsula ever see unification? On today's After 10, we meet the man in charge of the nation's only policy institute dedicated to unification. Stay with us. The first president of the Korea Institute for National Unification under the Park administration, Chun Sung Hoon. He is a well-respected specialist on unification issues at the Ministries of Unification and National Defense and the Chungwade Crisis Management Center. Early this year, he was active in President Park Geun-hye's transition committee as an expert member. Contributing to the unification policies with ambition, the president of the Korea Institute for National Unification, Chun Sung Hoon. Join us now for our After 10 discussion. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on After 10. Thank you very much for inviting me. Well, last mm -hmm. month, the Park administration appointed you as the president of the Korea Institute for National Unification. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. What does the institute do and how do you see your role? Uh, the main mission of the, uh, our institute, Ki uh, short Kino, uh, is to support and spread our government unification policies. And we were established in 1991 in the wake of uh, German unification. And previously, the Ministry of, Un of Unification had a very small research unit, but German unification actually awakened uh, both Korean government and people that you know, Korean unification will come soon, suddenly, uh, unexpectedly, as what Germany did. So government decided to set up a formal research unit to study every aspect of North Korea, inter-Korean relations, and also our unification policy, and prepare, basically prepare Korea, uh, South Korea for uh, eventual uh, unification. Well, it seems as if each presidency has a specific mm -hmm. uh, way of approaching unification yes. and North Korea relations. Mm -hmm. And you were on the president's transition committee mm -hmm. uh, drafting the new five-year right. blueprint for yes. inter-Korean relations mm -hmm. and unification. It was a bit of, uh, I guess you could say, she had a new approach mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to North Korea. Did it feel like you were taking some risks at the time? Throughout the government, uh, many uh, you know, series of our Korean governments, uh, each government has their own uh, specific unification policy. But in the mainstream, uh, they have a very similar you know, policy, uh, policy approach to Korean unification. Basically, I think uh, since the president, former President Park Jong hee era, since 1970, when he uh, made a speech at our National Liberation Day, uh, Korean government's overall unification policies to embracement, embracing North Korea and promote a constructive engagement with North Korea. And President Park, uh, Madame Park Geun-hye, uh, she has a very personal strong interest uh, about Korean unification and also improving inter-Korean relations. And during her campaign trail, uh, she promised many things about unification and she made a lot of remarks about uh, Korean unification. And I think her ideas and thoughts are embodied in uh, the new government's unification policy. And actually, at the transition team, we set up a five major uh, policy goals of this new administration. And one of these five goals is uh, to establish a foundation for a uh, happy unification era. And this May, the government actually uh, reorganize, reshuffle all these uh, policies and objectives and you know, the projects. And they set up a four uh, administrative goals or principles. And one of these four goals is to establish a, a solid foundation for peaceful unification. So one of the goals of this administration is, is unification. To that extent, uh, President Park herself and this administration has a very keen interest and focus on uh, Korean unification. And a big part of mm -hmm. this process for reunification involves trust on both sides. Yes. And uh, trust between the leaders of both sides. What mm -hmm. do you think um, the dynamic between President Park Geun-hye mm -hmm. and the new leader Kim Jong-un mm -hmm. would, would yield in the next few years? Trust is the uh, underlying philosophy of this administration, you know, covering all aspects of uh, government policies, both domestic policies, inter-Korean relations, and even foreign policy. And in, in the context of inter-Korean relations, uh, President Park uh, believes that, you know, this time, when she is sworn in as a 18th uh, president, uh, the trust between the two Koreas reached at, at, at the neither, the minimum trust. And reversely, it is right time to rebuild 
uh, tr trust between the two sides. And the first thing we have to do to build the trust is to uh, implement what we have promised, what we have already agreed. And that is the first that should be to you know, improve our level of trust. So that's what she asked North Korea to uh, you know, carry out what you promised. And we, on our part, we also willing to, and we, will, we should carry out our own, uh, you know, what we have promised to you. That is the basis of uh, set the tone of you know, engaging uh, North Korea from uh, this administration. A lot of policies in the past were probably geared towards mm. uh, strategizing a potential unification based on uh, Kim Jong-il in mm. power. But mm. with Kim Jong-un mm. in power, do you think he has what it takes to be the leader when that happens? You know, when Kim Jong-un came in as a new leader in North Korea, I think we have uh, both similarities and differences compared to his father's and his grandfather's generations. The first similarity is that you know, he is one of the leaders of this three-generational hereditary system, which means that he cannot move beyond the limits set by his father and his, his grandfather. And the different thing is that uh, we see a more uh, higher level of unpredictability and instability, instability in North Korea. For example, look at how so frequently North Korea actually reshuffle the high-ranking military officials. And look at North Korea's you know, South Korea policy. In the first half of this year, you know, they ratcheted up tensions. You know, they did everything, I think, at least in the verbal, you know, to increase the tensions uh, toward South Korea. And suddenly they changed in the, from this, this summer with a you know, very uh, mild tone. And we agreed to reopen Kaesong Industrial Park. And also we agreed to have this, even if uh, one shot, you know, family reunion uh, gatherings. But suddenly they change again to, to stop you know, family and business and they restart their verbal you know, attack on us. So very abrupt, you know, sudden changes of this uh, South, uh, their South Korea policy. Uh, I think this shows uh, uh, the you know, higher level of unpredictability, which means, uh, uh, you know, which actually makes many people uh, around the Korean Peninsula worry about the future of North Korea's you know, uh, regime stability and their policies. So we see many inner Korean mm -hmm. projects, yes. uh, economic, humanitarian, mm -hmm. even tourism. Can they be seen as baby steps towards unification? One of the major principles of you know, the South Korean government uh, so far has been a gradualism. We want to build up our relations uh, from the very small things to you know, bigger ones, right? Gradualism, step-by-step -step approach. And that's reasonable. I think that makes sense. And that has been a traditional our, uh, North Korea policy. And that's what applies to uh, President Park Geun-hye's uh, the, the trust, policy, uh, trust process too. Uh, basically, it is a uh, trust process consists of three major steps, uh, you might say. The first step is to, we, pro we are willing to provide uh, humanitarian assistance to, you know, weak, uh, uh, to North Koreans uh, without any condition without even a progress in, of North Korean denuclearization, uh, without any uh, political you know, situation, uh, without any tech, we are willing to provide uh, uh, humanitarian assistance as, as much as we can. And the second step is to engage with North Korea and to begin a modest level of uh, economic exchange, uh, exchange and also so social and cultural uh, exchanges. So uh, through this process, we are going to build up our mutual trust. And then finally, at the third stage, we are willing to you know, launch a so-called Vision Korea project, which is a very ambitious, uh, you know, a very extensive economic project to build up North Korean economy. And if that uh, project was uh, successful, we will uh, enter into a economic integration. But this third stage is so big, we need to uh, put two conditions. One is uh, we need the enough trust to enter into that stage. and the denuclearization of North Korean nuclear program should have some meaningful achievement. Right, so it seems as if we're taking you know, a step forward, mm -hmm. step back, or mm -hmm. sometimes two steps yeah. back uh, when these projects either mm -hmm. get canceled mm -hmm. or halted right. due right. to political yeah. uh, maneuverings. Yes. Do you think that's just a part of turbulence along the road, or is yeah. there a way to improve the situation where both sides don't yes. feel like the trust is being broken? Actually, the former uh, dialogue between North and South Korea, I think, started, started uh, from 1971. 
So we have um, uh, about 40 years of uh, intercranial dialogue experiences. And this whole process has been you know, not easy. You know, as you said, uh, so many turbulences and uh, mines and you know, obstacles. But we have go through all these obstacles. And in the end, I think the end of the result is that we, we made progress despite all, <laughs> all these you know, turbulences. And we are on the same path. Uh, you know, we see setbacks, uh, you know, the failure of this agreement, uh, Northern violations, another round of ratchet of tensions, etc. But in the end, overall, I think that uh, history directs us to the right direction, and you know, we uh, we make a progress. I think. Well, it seems the trust building process mm -hmm. did bear a lot of fruit with Kaesong in the in the mm -hmm. sense that the Park administration was able to get some safeguards for Kaesong, mm -hmm. which seemed to be a uh, a concrete measure to institutionalize yes. some more trust. Do you, do you see that? Yeah, I think the, spilling over. The, in order to one of the way to demonstrate, you know, to trust is that uh, intercultural relations should be sustainable. You know, as I said, we have, we have many turbulences, but despite these uh, bigger or minor turbulences, some of the projects should should you know keep on this track, right? So we want to make Kaesong Industry Park as that model, and one way to stabilize this case in this park is to internationalize the, this park. But, uh, that means that we want to put uh, international elements into this uh, industrial park. For example, by inviting uh, other third country you know, uh, companies or Chinese companies. You know, we have these uh, observers, third parties. That means North Korea will not behave what they want, right? Uh, they will be restricted by these international rules and norms. Uh, in that way, we want to uh, restrict uh, abnormal behavior of North Korea and lead them to more uh, sta uh, stable and predictable way. And in the, in the end, we are going to achieve a sustainable, a very, uh, sustainable and healthy inter-Korean relations. Right, so we mm -hmm. see that Kaesong is continuing along, mm -hmm. but the family reunion issue yes. was another uh, bit of turbulence. Why mm -hmm. do you think that there's mm -hmm. a, a sort of a two-track approach here? I think that maybe one of the major reasons is that there is an internal uh, the policy struggle in North Korea. Uh, actually, in the beginning, North Korea tried to link this case, uh, the family reunion business with the you know, reopening of Gungang uh, Mountain, uh, Mountain Tourism Project. And at, at the moment, our, our government is, is not very uh, anxious to, uh, you know, to you know, reopen this case in the Gungang uh, Tourism Park uh, with ma due to many reasons, uh, both domestic and international reasons. So um, maybe North Korea tried to put pressure on our government to uh, have a more close ties with this family reunion business with the you know, Kaesong, uh, Kungangsan Industrial Park uh, tourism project. And maybe uh, North Korea also tried to put pressure on the Washington or Beijing to, you know, uh, to elicit, you know, their, well, to meet their, their demands in, in some other you know, mm. issues, including uh, nuclear issues and six party toxics, et cetera. Well, speaking of six-party talks, mm -hmm. one of the big issues is denuclearizing North mm -hmm. Korea. And there have been reports from some experts saying mm -hmm. that they noticed satellite images that show smoke yes. coming out mm -hmm. of the Yongbyon mm -hmm. nuclear mm -hmm. reactor, mm -hmm. possibly hinting that the nuclear program is resuming. Mm -hmm. How do you think we should go about the nuclear issue? That seems mm -hmm. to be the big trust factor that we're looking at. Yeah, North Korea nuclear program has been, you know, very long-term issue to us, more than 20 years ago it was started, right? To North Korea, I think, this nuclear weapon is the most important strategic and political asset to them. So they want to utilize this asset as much as they can. So in a way, to, for, for example, in this case, when they were they showed up that they are running again, you know, this reactor, the plutonium production machine. I think their objective is to draw international attention. They're, they're, this issue is still alive. Uh, they don't want to you know, shadow the Syrian uh, chemical weapon issue over <laughs> their nuclear weapon issue. <laughs> and also they want, to, they have demanded restart six, six part of talks, right? But uh, Korea, South Korea and the United States are very cool right, to North Korean demand. So they want to draw attention from the international community, I think. So yeah. it seems as if the nuclear issue in North Korea mm. almost guarantees their sovereignty. 
So mm. if, if they have these nuclear weapons, they can maintain their state. Not, how, how can we... I'm not sure whether the you know, North Korean nuclear weapons actually guarantee their sovereignty. You know, we'll look at well, the year when uh, they don't have nuclear weapons. No, no one uh, pay attention to North Korea. They were there, uh, you know, very I isolated corner of Northeast Asia. No one pay attention to that. No one pay attention to their human rights. No one pay attention to North Korean, you know, dictatorship. But once they, you know, begin this nuclear business, it draw international attention, which you know, nuclear weapon is detrimental to international security. So that actually invites international innovation from around the world. What do they get out of that? Uh, you know, North Korea. You know, now North Korean system itself, so-called North Korea problem. Not only you know this nuclear, North, North Korean nuclear weapons problem, but also all this massive businesses done by North Korean government, including human rights, you know, all this uh, uh, counterfeiting, uh, trafficking, etc. It's highlighted uh, on the international stage. They're now they're under international sanctions, U.S. scale council sanctions. That this is pretty new situation, right? So I, I, I'm not sure whether you know North, uh, nuclear weapon actually uh, serves North Korea's interest. Uh, I think North Korean leadership should understand, should should know this fact. Because there's trust between North and South Korea, mm. but then uh, from the North's perspective, that also involves. Uh, the United States. They don't trust the United States' intentions. It's, it's so not a, it's not a matter that? of trust. It's a, a North Korean strategy. Uh, they are long-term strategy to get out, uh, you know, move uh, America out of the peninsula. They want to use every excuse to uh, achieve that purpose. And nuclear thing is just one of the means to achieve their, uh, their objective. Well, North Korean state leader mm. uh, Kim Jong-un has yet mm. to make a state visit to China. Mm -hmm. Park Geun-hye has already yes. made successful visits to mm -hmm. the United mm -hmm. States and China. Do you mm -hmm. think that puts some sort of uh, psychological pressure on the North Korean leadership? A lot of pressure to North, uh, North Korean leadership, I think. Uh, look at you know, when they dispatched their special envoy to China, uh, Choi Yong-hye. It, uh, it was between uh, President Park Geun-hye's visit to Washington and her visit to Beijing, right? So I think they got uh, enormous pressure uh, from you know, this very successful diplomatic initiative, initiative done by President Madame Park Geun-hye. Especially, you know, this uh, you know, ROK-US alliance is traditional ally, so you know, making better relationship is nothing new. But look at ROK-China relationship. This summit has been one of the best and most successful summit between you know, China and the Republic of Korea. So I think that uh, has a very uh, shocking uh, impact on the North Korean leadership, and also you know, look at military military relation between Be uh, relation between Beijing and Seoul. Recently, our uh, top-ranking military leader with China, they got on board a Chinese aircraft, you know, aircraft carrier, and they got on board Chinese submarine. That has never happened. It was the first time the top uh, military-ranking South Korean military leaders, you know, get you know, on spot <laughs> relations with Chinese military leaders. Well. President Obama has called his strategy strategic patience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, not to uh, you know, get too alarmed mm -hmm. and not to make mm -hmm. any rash actions. But mm -hmm. a, a recent report by US Cong mm -hmm. the US Congress mm -hmm. uh, said that it would be a risky mm -hmm. way to go. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think they're think being the, too alarmist? You know, first of all, I think the strategic, strategic patience doesn't mean that America doesn't do anything. You know? uh, even, uh, even now, at this moment of time, uh, this uh, UN sanctions, are still running, you know, based on these four very strict uh, resolutions, uh, economic sanction resolutions. It's just still running, and also this, you know, so-called proliferation security initiative, you know, you know, checking all this in and out of North Korean vessels, uh, to whether they carry all these, you know, dangerous materials. Look at what happened in the Panama these days. Uh, uh, a few months ago, they, you know, government of Panama, they catch up this uh, North Korean vessel. Uh, which carries all these, you know, the arms and uh, the things. So, you know, you know, tightening control is already uh, uh, set and it's running. But strategic, the background of, of this American strategic patience is that American leaders uh, and elites also, academics too, they are fed up with uh, North Korean violation and uh, again, this vicious cycle. Uh, they used to say America doesn't want to buy a same horse twice. And uh, they also say, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So they, want, they don't want to repeat the same mistake, you know, what, uh, what they did in the past. So I think that is the basis of so-called strategic patience. Well, it's the 60th anniversary of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. truce here in Korea, mm -hmm. but even though the fighting has stopped, there has mm -hmm. been separated family members, mm -hmm. 
uh, who have had to deal with the pain for mm -hmm. six decades. Mm -hmm. Do you, does that factor into how you go about your work about the the timeline for trying to do unification? You know, some people think of it as long term. Other people want to be more short term. What, what's your take on it? You know, already you know we have uh, been six, six years divided, and as you see, we already have many differences between the South and Northern societies. Even some languages are different. There are our way of thinking, our lifestyles are different. So there we are, uh, we are seeing many differences. So I think the unification, uh, as a matter of fact, the sooner the better. Uh, sooner the better, because we have to reduce you know, the gap of the, between the two, uh, two societies as much as we can, as soon as we can. Of course, but when you achieve this unification sooner, that means we have a bigger burden, both psychological, financial, political, and even strategic burdens, okay? But, uh, you know, Unification is something that leads to, you know, historic paradigm shift, and that much is a big event, and we have to understand that, and we have to be ready to uh, take all this responsibility to achieve that uh, that goal. So unification takes a lot of preparation. What can you do to mm. reassure mm. Uh, some of the viewers, mm. the international viewers, domestic mm. viewers, yeah. about uh, what sorts of preparations are being uh, mm. made? In terms of policy, uh, that's what we are doing. Uh, Ministry of Unification is doing our policy preparations, and also we support Ministry of Unification to have a better policy uh, domestically to educate our people, uh, you know, uh, provide uh, right information to make them have a, a fair judgment, balanced judgment about uh, unification. And we want to foster uh, pro-unification views among uh, Korean people and uh, to lead to a national unity about unification. That is very, that's very, very important. You know, national unity should be the basis of our uh, future unification effort. That's what uh, President Park Geun-hye also emphasized during her campaign trail, right? And at the same time, uh, unification diplomacy is also very important. And we want to, uh, we have to tell our neighbors and also international uh, community around the world that uh, Korean unification will be a, a good thing for regional stability and all the world peace. And what would you like to be remembered for after you know, spending uh, your life's effort on this issue? Uh, I want to, uh, you know, inherit unified country to my son and to my, uh, to my children, our children. And uh, I don't want to let uh, them live in, in another uh, divided nation. So I want to achieve Korean unification in my lifetime. All right, President Chan, thank you so much for okay. joining us here on After 10. Thank you very much. And that does it tonight for After 10. Thanks for watching. Please join us again next time.